Earning your degree online doesn't mean you have to go about it alone. At Capella University, we're here to support you when you're ready. From enrollment counselors who get to know you and your goals, to academic coaches who can help you form a plan to stay on track. We care about your success and are dedicated to helping you pursue your goals. Going back to school is a big step, but having support at every step of your academic journey can make a big difference. Imagine your future differently at capella.edu. Get the little ones, sit back, relax, and listen to the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audiences. Chapter 31 Andy Parker gasped as the automatic gunfire threw handfuls of masonry into the air just before his eyes. The battle had been raging for several minutes now, and Parker could not begin to estimate how many foes had fallen or how many remained. The Red Panda had made short work of the zombie soldiers of the crime cabal. It had been cut down savagely in a blinding flurry of swings and slashes of the katana. Limbs were removed with surgical precision in seconds, and though the walking horrors that this criminal mob had created to do their dirty work still writhed and moaned, they lay scattered on the cement floor, helpless and harmless. Parker had seen only glimpses of the Red Panda through the clouds of blinding smoke. He had seen the effortless ease with which he was capable of exercising deadly force when he chose to. And to his amazement in the instant the last of the zombie horde had fallen, he had seen the masked man sheathe the samurai sword in a smooth and silent motion. There were dozens of enemies charging through the smoke, all heavily armed and bent on his destruction, but he stood prepared to meet them with his bare hands. He was coiled like a serpent ready to strike, but it was clear to Parker in that moment that the man so feared by the underworld and the law alike was more willing to face death than to deal it. All at once, their enemies were upon them like a shock wave. Obscured by the thick smoke, the gangsters had not seen the fate of the zombies that had rushed in first. Far from charging to bear witness to a slaughter, they were running headlong to their own destruction. Too late, they realized that their grim foeman awaited them, ready to meet their knives and guns with his red gauntleted fists at the ready. The first charge had met their fate like a wave crashing against a seawall. A great, seemingly unstoppable force was utterly dissipated by the resistance it encountered. Those that followed hard upon the first charge had tripped over those behind them in their rush to get away. The flash of gun muzzles began to show themselves as targets through the clouds of smoke. Parker had drawn his service revolver and done his best to provide support for this remarkable being. Since then it had become a running game of tag through the maze of tunnels that had once offered sanctuary to the crime cabal. Their army of crime had struggled to regroup itself, finally breaking into a mad dash for the gate that led to the last chance for freedom. And so Parker had found himself once again in the wide alcove just inside the second steel door, but this time he and the masked man were the hunters, not the prey. Two muzzles flashed again from up the hallway that ran to the east. Parker fired another volley in that direction, then stopped himself quickly. He blinked his eyes hard. He could have sworn he saw the red panda down that hallway, but... He had been sure a moment ago that the masked man was routing their enemies in the opposite direction. The rolls of laughter and the cowardly shrieks that came in response told him he had been mistaken. The Red Panda must be in the direction in which he had just fired. He whipped around quickly to face the other direction and was amazed to see the shadow of the masked man down the hallway to the west as well, accompanied by the same joyous, mocking laughter. Parker's head swam. He looked wildly around him. In every direction there was smoke and chaos and the broken forms of their foes strewn about the floors. And everywhere he looked he saw the Red Panda. In forms large and small and shapes fantastical, striking terror into all who met the gaze of his blazing eyes. Parker struggled to keep his composure. He knew it must be one of the Red Panda's hypnotic powers in which he had been caught up. But still he held his fire as the remaining soldiers of the crime cabal charged from their cover and broke for the gate with the promise of freedom. He could not tell which of these many shapes truly was the Red Panda, and he had not forgotten the masked man's promise of his fate should he err in his aim. He needn't have worried. As the first of that final desperate charge broke for the door, the real Red Panda revealed himself as he dropped from the ceiling above, his feet and fists swinging with precision and blinding speed. The mob howled with rage and fear, by now insensible to strategy of any kind but savage, desperate self-preservation. But there were still so many of them, and from his position Parker was unable to do more than pick off those few that got past the fray for the door. 
They were still ahead on points, but so desperately outnumbered that Parker could not imagine their ultimate escape. Suddenly, the throng seemed to freeze at some new terror. Coming from directly behind them was a long, blood-curdling battle cry, sending chills up every spine and parting the mobsters like the Red Sea as each turned to have their worst fears confirmed. Somehow, the flying squirrel had gotten loose. All at once she burst through the doorway to a chorus of small arms fire. The Red Panda carved his way through the throng towards her with a shout. Parker, largely ignored by the crooks, gave the best covering fire that he could. He could not help but stop and watch her as she charged into the room, ran straight up the wall as if it were not there, and shot forward with amazing force, sparks flying from the base of her boots. From under her arms the remarkable gliders of her costume unfurled, and she flew forward at tremendous speed, the soldiers of the cabal scattering before her. She flew directly towards the red panda, who had his wrists crossed and arms out to meet her. For a moment... Parker felt a sharp pang of irrational jealousy as he expected them to embrace. Far from it, she joined hands with him, and in a maneuver clearly long practiced, he spun her, windmill-style, through the air, towards the crowd of toughs now charging them from the back. She twisted mid-air and turned the full force of their combined kinetic energy into a mighty kick that sent one gangster thundering back through the air, taking out three of his fellows behind him in the process. Parker was a man of action and had seen some remarkable displays of courage and teamwork in his time on the force. Nothing in his experience had prepared him for the sight of these two heroes, reunited, routing their enemies with such skill, such determination, and most of all, such overwhelming joy at the activity. If he spun with a high kick, she ducked under it, though to Parker's eyes she could not possibly have seen it coming. When she turned to throw a punch, he was there to cover her back, They knew which attackers to take and which to leave for the other, and fought always with perfect trust in the other's abilities. They each read the flow of battle as if it were a dance to which they had long ago learned the steps and which their foes were seeing for the very first time. There could not have been more than four or five left standing when there came the sudden clatter of machine gun fire, and the last soldiers of the crime cabal were cut mercilessly down from behind. Parker gasped from his vantage point as he saw a small man with a pleasantly round face beaming a great smile as he leveled a Thompson submachine gun at the two heroes. Sorry, he said with a grin. I got fed up waiting. The two masked heroes froze where they stood. They were twenty feet from their opponent, with no cover beyond the carpet of unconscious forms scattered around them on the floor. "'Boss, you remember Kid Chaos?' the flying squirrel panted sarcastically. "'Chaos, chaos,' the masked man feigned an effort of memory. "'Doesn't ring a bell.' The little man strafed the ground in front of them with bullets. Neither of them flinched. "'Surprised to see me?' he beamed. "'After those sequenced explosions,' the red panda said, "'you might as well have signed your name in lights.' "'Always the gentleman,' Chaos sneered, tightening his grip on the weapon." Parker stepped forward from the shadows, his service revolver extended. He had Kid Chaos dead to rights. "'Don't move!' he managed to say before he felt a crush of pain against the back of his head and staggered forward, sprawling onto the cold cement floor. He rolled once, groping for the pistol he had lost in the fall. Towering above him, he saw a tall, dour woman with raven hair and a long, flowing cloak. She was swinging something in her hand which Parker couldn't quite force his eyes to focus on. "'A blackjack, Antonia,' the red panda scolded. "'Not very subtle for a brilliant chemist like you.' "'Professor Zombie shrugged a little. "'When in Rome,' she smiled. "'I see you came for your little pet. "'I thought I'd drop by and stop her from killing you,' the red panda smiled. "'The flying squirrel gaped at Andy Parker on the floor. "'You brought him?' she said with disbelief. "'Jealous?' her partner teased. "'There was a sudden clatter of machine gun fire into the ceiling above.' "'I think somebody wants some attention,' Kit said under her breath. "'I am trying to have a final confrontation here,' Kid Chaos pouted. "'Something with a little dignity for once.' Parker lifted himself to his knees, gazing at the destruction around him. "'This was dignified?' Kid Chaos seemed not to see him, but stepped closer to the red panda, his finger squeezing the trigger as hard as he could without firing." After what you did to me, Kid Chaos breathed through gritted teeth, 
You deserve worse than the quick death you will get. What did I do, exactly? The red panda seemed confused. I stopped you from destroying the world, yet somehow you've survived again. What makes this time so very different? Parker was amazed at the casual ease with which these old foes exchanged unpleasantries on the knife's edge of destruction. Kid Chaos seemed to blink back tears. You have no idea how long it took me to escape, how much I suffered the crushing boredom of eternity, Kit interjected, and so this time he decided to take on some partners. Partners nothing, Chaos snarled. They were bait. I knew you couldn't resist the urge to break up the last big gang in the city, and I'd be waiting to have my revenge at last. That explains why you're slumming with this cram cabal, the red panda turned to Professor Zombie. What about you? She shrugged again. I needed the money, she sighed. But it's so hard to work with humans. I really don't work or play well with others. As if on cue, Parker could just see a single shadowy form staggering up the hallway behind the villains. He almost spoke and got the side of the flying squirrel's boot jabbed into his leg for his trouble. And now it's over, the red panda smiled in spite of the odds. There is nothing left here for you to gain. That's just where you're wrong, Mask Menace. Kid Chaos drew back a step to spray his enemies with bullets. At that second, he was suddenly picked up and thrown backwards, strafing the ceiling above as he flew bodily, head and shoulders above his unseen foe. He fell hard against the cement floor, and the Tommy gun went clattering across the floor, the ammunition drum flying apart as it did so. Chaos was still recovering, still trying to see who his assailant was when he heard Professor Zombie cry in a commanding tone, Malcolm, stop! The gangster leader's walking corpse was still intact, and as predicted, he had become unpredictable. He lashed out at Professor Zombie with a blow that sent her reeling and left no doubt that what was left of Malcolm was beyond her control. She turned and ran in the opposite direction, deeper into the tunnels, as if returning to her laboratory. The zombie glared at the masked heroes a moment. The red panda's hand returned to his sword hilt. Flying Squirrel stayed his attack. Boss, wait. Wait, Parker sputtered, horrified at what he saw. Suddenly, Malcolm turned on his heels and thrust himself bodily at the form of Kid Chaos, who was staggering to his feet. Malcolm's eyes fixed coldly on the raised portion of Kid Chaos's shirt that obscured the device fixed to his chest. He reached for it, clumsily but forcefully. Kid Chaos fought him as hard as he could, squealing in terror all the while. "'What in blazes?' the red panda began. The flying squirrel pulled at his arm. "'Explain later!' she cried. "'Run now!' They broke for the great steel door with all speed, Parker struggling to keep up with them. "'Why are we running?' he called as his legs pumped as fast as they could down the long underground hallway. "'Ask her!' the red panda called back. "'She never says run unless there's a good—' Suddenly, there came the first in a series of mighty explosions, as large as any that had destroyed the golden goose— The first shock of it pushed all three of them off their feet, and the blasts kept coming from deep within the fortress behind them. From a distance, they saw the light grow as the wall of fire roared up the hallways of the once mighty sanctum of the crime cabal, rolling on, meeting with other great fires, rolling right towards them. Run! Kit called again, and the three did. Another twenty yards to the first gate, now unmanned and unguarded, past the first steel door, which, even for all its thickness, could never stand against what was coming, and up the ladder. The red panda burst through the trapdoor in the floor of Fong's laundromat to the screams of employees and customers alike. Out of here, all of you! He roared in a voice no one dared disobey, as the flying squirrel helped Constable Parker up the last rungs. The three of them broke for the door, as a great tongue of flame burst forth from the trap door, shattering the ceiling of the laundromat. The store was evacuated immediately. No one appeared to follow out the trap door. Nothing but fiery death that quickly spread to every surface in the place. Fong's laundromat quickly became an inferno. From his position of safety across the street, Mr. Fong wailed in despair. His feeling of dread had been right. Nothing good had come of his aiding crime. Nothing good ever could.
The following message is for podcasters only. If you are a listener and not a podcaster, you are permitted to cover your ears and say la 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 for the next 30 seconds or so. Okay. Podcasters, la, 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 if you create la, 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 audio drama and or comedy, la, 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 you are invited to join the brand new Mutual Audio Network. Not only will your productions be showcased in a brand new Netflix-ish type of distribution, but you'll also share in resources from music to sound effects to voices la, 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 to people saying la 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 la. la, la. For details, visit MutualAudioNetwork.com or inquire at MutualAudio at gmail.com. La, 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 la. You can stop la-la-ing now. Well, I can't hear you. Got my ears covered. La-la. <laughs>